And so one of the largest pages on Facebook, um, if you think about it, is the home page. Uh, so the combination of you see and my feed, um, and there are a lot of different aspects which go into this page. Um, when you go and think about making this page, we're going and doing things such as, okay, to show David's page, we need to go and find all his friends, we need to go and see what information he's able to provide, he's able to see. We need to go and look at the, pro the privacy information for each of the different pieces of information who choose to share something with all of his friends or just with people inside of the Facebook network. Um, what did people like? What did people comment on? And so to build a news feed for any specific person, we're going and looking at thousands of different things at a given time and then deciding what we want to, show, what we want to show. This isn't just a Facebook specific problem. Maybe you can solve this. It's a general problem that basically any social application that has an interconnected graph of user data. So uh, anyway, so basically, if you think of it from this perspective, as we as Bob uses profile, he's seeing data from all of his friends, which may be located, physically may be located all around the world. And so as we pull it in and you know, if I commented on something that David wrote, and then David's trying to use his news feed, then he might see not only his friends, but my comment on me, it's just it gets uh, kind of complex. Uh, and so this is something we had to build infrastructure to handle. Yeah, because really for any one of these pages that we're building, it's not just going and finding my data that we're that we need to show it to me. But data from hundreds of different people um, across the site as well. And so our, our architecture looks pretty much like what you'd expect from traditional LAN websites, so running Linux and Apache and MySQL and PHP. But we've done a lot of different um, performance um, tweaks and hacks and enhancements sort of all throughout the site. Um, so going and doing things that are load balancers, that are the web server, um, in terms of making PHP faster, as well as them going and building out uh, services and caching layers um, and the connection between databases and caches. And that's what we want to talk about a little bit today in terms of a few of the services which we've gone and built, which have really helped us scale Facebook, um, and which are also open source in terms of going and having this be something which other people are able to take advantage of, um, use, and build upon as well. So one of the most popular parts of Facebook is Facebook Photos. Um, I assume most of you have gone and played the photos on the site. You know, you're able to go and find people that you know in your photos, go and find photos that you were taken. Um, we're the largest photo storage site on the net um, at this point. Um, and we store about 8 billion photos. So it's about 20 billion photos in four different sizes, so we can show them in different places. Um, and I think we serve somewhere about 1.2 million photos per second. So we've created a piece of technology called Haystack. Uh, it really helps us do this. Uh, and Haystack is something which we'll be using <coughs> later this year. But we wanted to talk a little bit more about sort of how Haystack works and why it's able to help us get this scale. So I'll get briefly technical. Um, in a typical Linux file system, when you access a photo that's just stored as a normal uh, file on disk, it can take between near between three to ten uh, disk seats, which is the magnetic disk on the hard drive spins around and then it has to stop and read the data and Keep going. So the person has to look up, based on the file name, has to look up the uh, directory, and then has to look up the file location within the directory, and then look up the file. And this is fine and very general purpose, um, but for a photo storage that is actually costing us, if it were even an optimized file system, three times what we actually needed. So basically the infrastructure we built was just a gigantic in-memory hash table which just has given a photo, uh, photo handle exact location on this for that photo stored. So uh, you can go and just access it directly. And it basically, it was this very uh, new low-level optimization, and it has saved the company millions and millions of dollars. Um, and it was good because of uh, power usage, latency costs, and the uh, CPU usage calculating those kind of hookups. And the cool part about it was it was just built by uh, three engineers who just saw the need for it and said, hey, let's try this crazy hack because that's basically what it is, and then uh, built it over the course of, uh, I think, just a few months uh, project uh, for a full uh, Yeah, that's a large part of our culture in terms of um, <coughs> very small teams going and building very important parts of the site. We're going and trying it a few different times. The first version of the ASAC that they built isn't the version of ASAC that we're, that we're running right now. We, we're not afraid of going, prototyping something, trying it out, throwing it away, starting over until we really get what we want. And I think that's something that's really uh, important to think about when you're going and building applications is being willing to try something and then continue to iterate on top of that. Um, so one of the other challenges that you have when you're scaling a site like this is keeping track of what's going on. 
And this is both from an application perspective in terms of what errors am I getting in my PHP servers or from a user to interacting in different ways. Um, and we were traditionally going and scaling uh, with a system called Syslog, which if there are any people running uh, Linux servers in the room, you'll know what Syslog is. It lets you go and pull together information from a bunch of different servers and look at that. But we hit the scale where Syslog uh, wasn't able to keep up. Um, today we log about 12 terabytes of data per day, um, which is about a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> so we developed a system called Stripe. Um, Stripe is open source. Um, we're using it all throughout our infrastructure, and Twitter's also started using it as well. Um, and once again, Stripe was built by one person. Um, it's able to work at a very large scale. It's open source. Um, we're looking to find more and more people interested in using it. And we then store all of our data from Stripe on in Hadoop and Hive. Um, Hive is a data analytics engine, also open source, which is built on top of Hadoop, which is um, an open source implementation of Google's MapReduce, which was started at Yahoo. Um, and what's really interesting is we've gone and developed tools on top of for this very geeky infrastructure so that hundreds of people inside the company are able to go and look at this data and analyze it and create reports every single month. So the other aspect is caching. Um, so we use an open source um, piece of software called Memcache. Uh, Memcache was originally created years ago, I mean, almost a decade at this point, I think, um, by Brad Fitzpatrick, who created LiveJournal, and who I worked with to also create OpenID. Um, we look up about 50 million objects from our cache every single second. And so this is really that connection between using databases for persistent storage, but then really needing to be able to get out all sorts of different types of information really quickly. Um, and we've done a lot of work to improve the performance of our cache. Yeah, so we use Memcache for everything on the site. So if you're looking up, you know, just take, for example, your name. Uh, your name shows up on the site all over the place. We have to do a DB lookup on your ID every single time to crush our DBs. So we throw in Memcache the first time you see it, and then it's there forever, so we just have to do a simple in-memory lookup. Um, and just to give an idea of some scale, um, earlier this summer we launched usernames, which allows users to make their user at facebook.com slash Luke Shepard, that's my username. And, uh, but we had to decide, most sites that have usernames start from the beginning with usernames, we didn't we had to decide how to allocate them, and we just invalidated a bunch of different ranking algorithms and auction systems, and ended up just going with the first come first serve system. Which means that we are basically inviting our entire user base to come to our site all at once and try to sign up for their user account. And if they didn't get it, then they were, you know, naturally going to hit refresh as many times as they could until they got the account they wanted. Um, and for many sites, this would be a denial of service attack. Uh, for us, it was a product launch. And we basically prepared for it. Uh, this is a Friday night at 9 p.m., so a low peak in the week of traffic. Uh, it was lots of upper room, and we just basically, they didn't know how, how it was going to work. Um, there were contingency plans up the wazoo uh, to turn off features of the site. They were planning on turning off chat, turning off messages, turning off all sorts of things if the site started to get hosed.